Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome to the channel. I'm in my car. I'm sitting in a car park just outside the hospital in Melbourne. Christian's gone in for some just day surgery to fix some carpal tunnel and I've got four hours to kill. I thought we'd go up shopping, do some treasure hunting, see if we can rescue some stuff from, well look, potentially landfill because a lot of op shops throw out their winter stock and or just send it off for some sort of recycling if we can find some good jackets and things for the shop we'll make this trip a payable concern so come along with me i'm not sure where this video is going to go we'll just make it up as we go i don't know how long it'll be i hope you enjoy the journey i'm going to have a bit of fun so we'll see you soon before i go we have if you can see in the back of the car boxes the, the back of the car is already full of boxes christine managed to rescue a heap of fabric uh, and I'll show you in a tick that was going to be dumped uh, and so we already have a car full before I start but I reckon I can squeeze a bit of stuff in I'll show you what she got before we hit the road so without taking too long I'll just show you this Christine randomly emailed a fabric company that uh, they do upholstery fabric or like furnishings I think and she just said she's into recycling fabric she has a YouTube channel on what to make out of stuff that's normally going to landfill and they said just in time we're getting rid of all these boxes of sample swatches i think they're called and we've absolutely wrapped to say this christine's ecstatic to get this fabric it's all really good quality all small pieces but she makes some amazing stuff out of this and puts it back into the circular economy and people absolutely love it so if you want to see more of this check out christine's channel it's christine's home affairs i'll put a link underneath so as you can see I'm already starting with a car full, but I reckon there's room in there for a few treasures. Rightio, I'm going to get some breakfast and then we'll check out where some local op shops are. Okay guys, there's a Melbourne tram, all brightly painted up. Now I've got a park outside a local op shop. We're in the suburb of Kew, which is probably one of the more expensive suburbs in Melbourne. It's just after 7.30, the traffic's starting to build up a fair bit. As Melbourne does I think peak hour goes for about three hours or four hours these days um, so I've got a good park I need to go and find some breakfast and there's some cafes around the, the street here now I'm outside a Selvo's opportunity shop or thrift store it doesn't open till nine but that's fine I'll go and have some brekkie and another coffee but just looking at the prices here I'm not sure I'm going to be able to buy anything that stool is $48 the piano still looks like $88. Uh, that's probably round about what I would ask. This is a really cool little nutcracker. Um, timber, mid-century, 1950s or 60s, but they got $38 on that. Um, I would probably ask only a little bit more, maybe 45 tops. There's a standard lamp here, again, sort of mid-century, 1940s, 1950s. Uh, and they've got $280 on that which is more than what I would ask so I don't think there's going to be too many bargains here that Royal Dalton grey dinner set there 33 pieces $228 these are antique shop prices to my mind um, but look we'll go and have a look because not every shop knows everything and there may well be some clothing that we can pick up you know, jackets or something perhaps end of uh, you know clearance lines or something there's lots of bric-a-brac down that wall so well we've got a park here it's worth a look and there's not going to be any other thrift shops or op shops open until at least no, nine or ten so let's go and have bricky first okay the first op shops open i'm right at the back of it already um there's a lot of stuff in here and they've got a good range so it's very nicely presented no uh, no problems about that even a bit of furniture i certainly won't be fitting that in the car I don't know if I'm going to find anything of interest here, but good chance to have a look around, fill in some time. Artwork might fit in the car, but I don't think I want any of that. Might check out some of the books, um, because there's a good chance that I can find a couple of reasonable books, and there's certainly no trouble getting them in the car. I'll check out some of the crockery, I'll have a bit of a look at some of the clothes. Um, but yeah, judging on the prices, I don't think I'll be buying much here. Ha! Huh. This is interesting. Forget about your standard library cataloging system. We have orange books, red books, blue books, green books, and beige books. What a great way to catalog them. I've got to say, their books are actually reasonably priced. Most of them are only $3. There's some 
books here that we would easily put in the five dollar sometimes even a ten dollar box so they're pretty good especially some larger coffee table books and even some gardening books here in really good niche, uh, condition only three dollars each so that's pretty good value but as you can see from this photo i took while i was having breakfast the car is not only full with uh, the boxes but also the weight as she's sitting down a little bit at the back so i don't want to buy too many large books to add to that there's a great array of stuff in here and it's quite light, nicely laid out nice and neat again we have the color theme happening yellows browns whites a uh, bit of vintage stuff amongst, amongst it most of it is fairly modern but some of these oh, that's homemade i think i guess it's an elephant um, this looks english 40 dollars yeah i think that's probably about twice what it should be but it's a cute little english jug that would be english as well but yeah there's nothing i can buy in those lines but occasionally a treasure sneaks through i was looking at the silver plate stuff and I always like to check these just in case some sterling silver slips through, which would be a bargain. This is just plate, as you can see there. And I find that pretty hard to sell. It looks like the plating's rubbed through. I uh, couldn't see a price on that one, but I saw some before that were, uh, you know, $20 and $30, which I think is uh, those days are gone for silver plate. Um, but we'll have a bit of a browse and I'll see if I can find any pewter because I'm collecting a bit of pewter at the moment I got some yesterday actually and I'll show you that later and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it in another little op shop now it's quite a cute little one lots of stock again and I don't think as much I can buy mainly clothing but uh, I did, all I got from the other one was a, a little pewter mug I was just talking about pewter and then I found one within the next minute there's some puzzles and games here sometimes i do okay with those but i wouldn't buy a jigsaw puzzle unless it was unopened because even though they say they're complete you can't you just can't guarantee that all the pieces are there so at least if it's sealed you've got a chance there's quite a few ladies here chatting uh, there's a bit of crockery and whatnot on the other side uh, and as for the clothes well i looked in the other shop and any jacket that was half good was over 50 dollars. so i'm not going to spend that much when i really don't know what i'm looking for these are 18 nine dollars that's only a polo so i'm only really looking for sports gear probably or um rm williams stuff or well-known collectible brands uh, i'm a bit of a novice at, novice at clothing but if you get out and look at least you learn so uh, i probably think i'll just put all this down to experience and um yeah maybe pick up something but really just having a look okay i did buy something in at last op shop uh, and it's a little salt and pepper set it may not be overly old but it is a metal tray it's got quite a lot of weight to it uh, they're in good order and i think they've got plastic bungs so but it's probably more likely in the last 10 or 20 years but it's a quality set and look for six bucks i reckon i'm not going to probably triple i might just go for make it 15 in the shop i think it will sell okay i like to buy something from everywhere the ladies were nice to chat to they did joke uh, that how would I go carrying a pink bag down the street and I said that's fine nobody knows me down here I think I can get away with carrying pink uh, the first op shop I told you I found a little pewter uh, tankard I guess you'd call it to Peter good luck from retail district 52 obviously a presentation thing and it's marked pewter it's Australian made but I'm not buying it for the uh, the fact that it's a cup or a mug or a tankard I'm buying it for pewter and you'll notice the pewter is very soft you can actually squash it really easily i'm going to probably melt this down i'll do a future video on that but pewter is worth pretty good money melted down and even sold on ebay but i might be able to do some castings with it so i'm just stockpiling a bit of that and that was only two dollars so there's another little shop across the road i've just driven down the street a little bit uh, this one's called the fair trade and gift shop so we'll go and check that one out and a little bit further down the street is a, a Vinnie's thrift store or op shop so it's uh, just after 10 I just had a call from the hospital and Christine's out from her minor surgery they did the carpal tunnel uh, keyhole surgery on both her hands and apparently it went really well and I've got to pick her up in about an hour so let's go and see if we can find a few more treasures and then I'll have to make another coffee it's one of those mornings I need an extra coffee okay I'm back to the car I couldn't film in that shop there was only a little shop and there was people everywhere and they had their music playing but I did find a couple of things um, a nice aluminium teapot these usually sell quite well 
and this one was only five dollars I think I'll get 15 for that without any problems and this really nice old knife it's a bone handle well it's called bone handle they're not technically bone um, but it's probably a fish knife or something uh, nice design again that was only five dollars I think I can straighten that it's just slightly bent I'll try that when I get home but I think again I can three times the money and get 15 for that so a nice little haul they did have exactly the same pewter mug as this one and this one I paid two for if you remember theirs was priced at 20 so it just shows you can't always go on how they price some things because there's always some bargains to be found and I always like to buy something had some great chats to the people handed out some business cards might even get a few YouTube subscribers so that if you see this video hi okay here we go guys I've just picked Christine up from the hospital so this now means we've only got what is it? We've got one good arm between the two yeah, of us. Exactly. All right, but we're still going op shopping. What troopers? <laughs> now, there's one just up here. We're just on our way home, and uh, the doctors did advise Christine to have a bit of a walk around every so often to stop the threat of deep, deep vein thrombosis. So I guess op shopping covers that requirement. Let's go and see if we can find something in here. Okay, I'm home, guys. Our trip went well. We did get a couple of things in that last op shop. Christine's having a rest on the couch now. She's recovering well. The fingers, she's getting feeling back in her fingers and apparently the um, the surgery went, went very well. So that's good. She should recover pretty quickly. Uh, I'll show you what I got for the op shop mucking around. It was only a couple of hours really, but uh, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a great haul and we're not talking a lot of dollars, but it was something to fill in a bit of time. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what I got. So here's my haul for the day. There were other things I could have bought, but I was I was more interested in just having a look around. I was chatting to the ladies that run the op shop and uh, the guy that ran the last one gave out a few business cards. So it was a fun time out, making a few connections. I did buy this enamel um, camping mug, coffee mug. It's the sort of mugs that the campers buy. I'm not sure where it's made. I think some of these might have been made in Poland. So it's a little bit vintage, a couple of little dings to it. He only charged me a dollar. So there's easy $5 there. The campers will snap it up. It's nice and clean inside, reasonably. Uh, and also we found this little uh, English pot. I guess it's like a little salt uh, salt cellar, you'd call it maybe, or a little jam pot. Uh, it's actually Wade. We didn't take the sticker off, but I know the um, I know the colour. It's Irish porcelain made by Wade in England. Only $2. We'd get about 8 for that, no problems. Uh, you saw the others. I think I'd get 15 for the aluminium teapot. I was going to go 15 on the salt and pepper. Now, I took the tape off. These are very heavy. They're like a cast aluminium, and I think they've been chromed. They're a little bit industrial. I kind of like them. I think I'll get 15, no worries. And the knife I managed to straighten without breaking the handle off. It is just EPNS, which is nickel-plated. Well, no, it's electro-plated nickel-silver, and you can see by the yellowy there, almost brass-type colour underneath it, the silver plating has been polished off it mostly. Sometimes these little ferrules are actually sterling silver. I didn't have a look at them, this one. They sometimes have some... I think that has got silver hallmarks on it. But it doesn't really make much difference because the amount of silver there is so small. Uh, but I think I'd get 15 for that knife quite easily. It looks much better now that it's straight. So I also got some pewter. And I was talking to you about pewter. Now I've just weighed up the bits I got. Uh, I picked up these candlesticks as well for just three dollars the pair. And pewter actually sells very well for people that want to do castings. Now I'm going to get into this or have a bit of a play with it one day. It melts at a very low temperature. You see, you saw how soft it was. So you can actually just melt it on a gas stove. I'm going to have a play with that one day. I'm not going to sell it. I'll just stack it aside. But I did some checking on eBay currently. On completed items, there was a two kilogram lot of pewter ingots that someone had melted down. Clearly, they were just from this sort of stuff. And they sold for, actually, it was about 145 with free postage. So uh, I reckon about 130 roughly, allowing 15 for postage. So that's $65 a kilo. Pretty good scrap price. Uh, and they were a buy it now, so they may have made more. But I also found quite a few listings for 100 gram lots of shot, which is like, you know, just tiny little balls of it. Uh, so 100 gram lots were selling for, I think it was about $32 free postage. So I, I rounded that down to 25 
and there was actually five lots sold from one seller and there was a few other sellers selling 100 gram lots as well and they were all selling so there are people that want pewter uh, and it's apparently it's very good for some forms of casting I saw one guy mention lost wax casting. I haven't actually seen that done before. I need to do some experiments there. But based on those prices, and we had 600, the thing's gone off now, we had 640 grams here. Uh, at the top price, if I just melt them into ingots, well, the, the guy got around about, well, that lot there would equal about $40. And if I broke it down to 100 gram lots of shot, uh, which I think you'd need to pour the molten metal into water to get the shot, I'm not sure on that. $160 so pretty good hey it's worth looking out for pewter uh, I did see hardly any listings didn't sell they were pretty well all sold but I might have a play with melting it myself and maybe even doing some casting one day but it shows you when you're out thrift shopping op shopping the pewter is well worth getting and as for the rest of it let's go through some figures here just to tidy this video up we paid a dollar and two dollars it's three dollars we paid five which makes eight we paid six, which makes 14, and five dollars there, which makes 19. So let's say 20 bucks. And what will we get for it? Well, I think I'll get five for that without any problems. We might nearly get 10 on that. The uh, little Wade Iris porcelain stuff actually still sells okay. So 15, we'll get 15 for that's 30. We're going to go 15 on. In fact, we've got 15 on all of them. So. That's 45 and 15 makes 60. So I've written down here, costs 20, return 60. I like to about triple my money, so that's pretty good. Uh, not though, And it took, what, a couple of hours? Probably not even that because I was chatting with a lot of the people I was handing out some business cards. I was chatting about YouTube and recycling. So we did some good net networking as well. So yeah, it wasn't work at all. It was a bit of fun. We've made 40 bucks. And then, of course add in whatever value you want to put on the pewter. So it was really an excellent couple of hours spent financially and socially. And, you know, I had to wait around for Christine to finish anyway. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, nothing terribly exciting, as I said. But hey, you know, it's a day out. It's a video. You might enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know if you enjoyed it. We will be doing some more op shop challenges down the track on when we go on trips and I do want to learn a little bit more about clothing and picking up some, you know, I've seen some really good profits made from jackets and things from op shops, and we like to have a few in our shop. So um, probably wouldn't do the expensive suburbs in Melbourne, more the local country town op shops. I think they're much better value. But anyway, bit of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.